Hello, welcome back. We are moving on from the male reproductive system to the female reproductive system. This lesson is going to cover oogenesis and the ovarian cycle. So again, um, the anatomy I'm leaving up to you guys to make sure you're learning all the parts and pieces of the ovary, the structures within the ovary, the ovary, um, the uterine tubes, the uterus, the cervix, the vagina, external genitalia. So make sure you're getting uh, spending some time on that. So uh, I will be covering a little bit of the anatomy of the ovary in this first slide as we're going to get into the process of oogenesis and the ovarian cycle. So we'll see a little bit of that. Okay, so ovaries are attached to, uh, they're suspended in the pelvic cavity by the ovarian ligament. And, um, but then they just kind of hang there. They're just suspended by the ovarian ligament coming off of the uterus, but they do have the uterine tube kind of surrounding one end of it and they don't touch. There's no physical connection between the uterine tube and the ovary. There is a gap there and we'll talk about some important characteristics with that also. Um, but just like so a lot of our other organs, there's a cortex and there's a medulla. And within the cortex, this is going to be all of your, uh, what's called the primordial egg nest or they're just calling it the egg nest. Um, this is where all of the oogonium, which are the, the stem cells that are found in the ovaries before a female is even born. These are developing in utero in a female um, baby. So those are found around the cortex. And then the medulla is a lot of blood supply and just some connective tissues to kind of help support it. When you see pictures like this, also in your lab manual, there's a good picture of the ovary. Know that when you're looking at this, this is not all at once. This is a whole 28 day cycle pictured in one picture. So you would not see all of these things at any one time. They're just showing you all of these structures in one picture so you don't have to see 28 individual pictures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of compare the process of oogenesis, which is the production of the oocyte, the egg, with the picture of the ovary so we can kind of see it, what would that look like in the ovary at that particular time. Um, and then the next slide will be our ovarian cycle. So then we'll kind of see that a little bit more with the, the ovary itself. So with oogenesis, it does go through meiosis, mitosis and meiosis, like in spermatogenesis, but there's some big, pretty big differences. So we're gonna start with, um, the stem cells, these are called the oogonium. And if you'll notice, these are before birth, they are diploid. So we're kind of tracking these same six chromosomes. There's two blacks, two reds, and two blues, diploid. Um, so before birth, a female fetus will be producing all of the eggs that it will ever have for the rest of its life. That's different than males because males start producing sperm at puberty and continue to produce sperm through their entire lifetime. Females have all of their eggs before they're even born, where males had that spermatogonium replacement step of mitosis. In females, that mitosis is happening all during fetal development. So these egg nests are where the millions and millions of eggs that are produced before the baby's born kind of hang out on that cortex in the edge. And so this is what we call the primary oocyte, and it is diploid. So all of this is happening before birth. Okay, baby's born, so from birth to puberty, all of these cells have started meiosis. It's so trippy, <laughs> like, if we can make meiosis any more complicated, this is it, is um, the female process of oogenesis. So the primary oocyte, just like the primary spermatocyte, it's the diploid stem cell that's going to make your uh, oocytes. So before birth, um, your DNA replicates, or your S phase of interface. So our individual chromosomes now are our replicated chromosomes, right? They've got the sister chromatids. They kind of look like a, a packet of four, and they're going to be, the homologs are going to come together, think prophase one. And so they're kind of stuck in that prophase one. Um, and all of this is happening before birth. Right? So before the baby's even born, the primary oocyte, they replicate their DNA. They're just stuck in prophase one pretty much through all of childhood. Okay? So that's what's happening here. This is all before birth. So we get all of our primary oocytes made. All the oogonium are converted to primary oocytes. So we lose any stem cells. And then those primary uh, oocytes go through DNA replication homologs find each other, their synapse, they're paired up, 
They might be doing their crossing over. I don't really know exactly when that's happening. So then at puberty, so 12, 11, 12, 13, whenever a girl starts going through puberty, meiosis one uh, is completed, right? So completed after puberty. And so this is gonna be on your 28 day cycle. So once a woman girl starts having her period, this is kind of the driving force for that. Um, every month, there's going to be a completion of meiosis one. Now here's one of the big differences. And we've already had a few differences, um, but one of the really big differences is that when you go and finish meiosis one, Right, so these are now going to be our haploid secondary oocyte. So primary oocyte, diploid, secondary oocyte, haploid. Take a look at those daughter cells. Are they equal? They are equal in their chromosomes. They each have three chromosomes, one black, one blue, one red. But what about the cytoplasm? There's there's nothing. So one's like a regular looking cell and one's what is what we call a polar body. So this is called the first polar body. And this one right here. So it is also haploid, but it is non-functional. And this is it right here. Kind of that red arrow pointing to. So here is the secondary oocyte right next to the first polar body. It's basically the size of the nucleus, and that's all it is. It's just the genetic information, no cell components at all. It's just half of the DNA. And that first polar body is non-functional. It cannot be fertilized. It is usually just recycled back into the ovary. It may or may not finish meiosis too, and we'll see kind of what happens if it does. All right, so now we have our secondary oocyte, just one. And then it goes, um, and during the cycle, so completed after puberty, your meiosis one, you're kind of hanging out in the secondary oocyte. In the secondary oocyte, it will continue to go through meiosis two, and it is halted in metaphase two. So metaphase was all the replicated chromosomes lined up on the metaphase plate, and it is halted there. And that is the state of all the chromosomes when the egg is ovulated this um, secondary oocyte, right? So now, get the right color here. We are at the secondary oocyte. It is ovulated in metaphase two of meiosis two. So then this ovulated oocyte will only finish, split those sister chromatids apart if fertilization occurs after ovulation. So it's ovulated with the sister chromatids stuck together. If a sperm, penetrates the egg, it will quickly go through meiosis two, splitting those chromatids and producing the second polar body, right? So the second polar body is haploid. It only has one of each of the chromosomes. And just like the first polar body, it is non-functional. So what we end up with is one ovum, right? So this is our, like, it would be like our spermatid, haploid, one haploid ovum and we have two polar bodies the first one the second one and maybe if that first one splits we would get these kind of residual polar bodies then that may or may not occur so here's one of the biggest differences in females you start off with one diploid parent cell the oogonium or primary oocyte and you end up with one ovum Whereas in males, you had one spermatogonium and you ended up with four spermatids. So males produce way more gametes than females do, and females' gametes are limited. They're not, I'm not saying males are un unlimited, but from puberty till death, they're continually making millions and millions and millions and millions of sperm, where females might ovulate on, you know, maybe 40, 400,000, I think is the number. The book has some details on how much you have when you're born, how much you, how many of these eggs you have when you're going through puberty. And how many do you have by the time you're done with your, your menses? So it's pretty crazy, but it kind of makes sense for humans. Because what if a female were to ovulate four ovum every cycle? What that means is if intercourse took place, there would be a high chance of quadruplets every single pregnancy. And for our bodies, our bodies are not made to carry four babies all at once. It's a, a big challenge on the human body just to carry one baby. 
let alone multiple babies. So over evolutionary time, we were able to continue the whole process of meiosis, but kind of cull some of those oocytes during the process. So we only end up with one functional oocyte which increases the survival rate of the baby that is being made and formed in the uterus. So it's kind of a cool evolutionary idea um, when, you, when you think about it. So that's a process of oogenesis that's happening in the ovaries. And we can kind of see it kind of goes in this, it's gonna go in that pattern. But again, that picture is not gonna be at any one time. That's a whole 28 day cycle. So that's gonna lead us into our ovarian cycle, which is on the next slide. Okay, so here's a slightly bigger picture of the ovary. It might help. So here's our primordial follicles. So this is, these are all of the oocytes in their little follicles. So the follicle is like a little house. Your lab manual has a much better picture of the follicles than in your textbook. So the follicle is like a little uh, protector. And then the oocyte is, is inside primary, secondary, ovum, whatever it happens to be. So your primary oocyte is inside these primordial follicles. Those are all found around the cortex of the ovary. Right, so then that, as it's maturing, it goes into the primary follicle and the secondary follicle and the tertiary follicle. So if you'll notice, they get bigger. And as these follicles are getting bigger, the oocytes inside are going through that process of oogenesis. And ultimately, what you're gonna end up with is your secondary oocyte in a large tertiary follicle. Sometimes it's called a graphian follicle. Sometimes it's called a vesicular follicle. There's lots of names for it, but it's the biggest one right before ovulation. So as our follicle is growing, getting bigger and bigger, bigger, inside of it, the egg is progressing from our diploid gameto, um, oogonium to our haploid secondary oocyte, getting ready for ovulation. And these first, um, these steps right here, this is what we call the follicular phase. And it's called the follicular phase because it's dominated by the follicles. They start small and then they grow large. And this is days one through 14 of a 28 day cycle. So average 28 days, some women are a little bit shorter, some women are a little bit longer. So the follicular, follicular phase lasts about 14 days. At day 14, we get ovulation. So that large fascicular follicle or tertiary follicle or graphian follicle, whichever word you use, ruptures, it bursts open and it releases this secondary oocyte halted in metaphase two that won't finish unless fertilization happens. And then it ovulates, right? So ovulation. And then what happens to that follicle? Well, the follicle changes identities. It's so cool. The tissues that for the first 14 days were primarily endocrine in nature of secreting estrogen with a little bit of progesterone, they change their whole role and kind of start producing progesterone with a little bit of estrogen uh, after a while. And this is what we call the corpus luteum. And so this is called the luteal phase because it's dominated by the corpus luteum. And so this is gonna be days 15 through 28. So the first half of the ovarian follicle is growing the follicle and maturing that oocyte to o secondary oocyte halted in metaphase two. Day 14 is ovulation, and then the second half of the ovarian cycle is the corpus luteum, secreting high levels of progesterone, and eventually it will degrade away into the corpus albicans. So basically means corpus luteum is yellow body, corpus albicans is white body, and it just kind of gets recycled back into the connective tissue of the ovary itself. Okay, so that is our ovarian cycle. Follicular phase, days one through 14, dominated by the follicles and estrogen. Day 14 is ovulation, and days 15 through 28 is the luteal phase, dominated by the corpus luteum, which secretes high levels of progesterone. So when we go into the uterine cycle and the hormones and all the cycles there, you'll see how that all is interplaying. There's a really good graph at the back of this chapter, um, towards the end of chapter 28, that shows all of these events happening simultaneously. So that's a really good tool. All right. That is it for this video. I will see you next time.